we can base insight to God on binary logic, we've got it made. We don't need faith anymore. It's extraneous, irrelevant. I am closer to absolute truth than any man has been before me. Do I think that makes me better than everybody else? No. I still work in a bar. I have discovered a viable path to God using 17th dimensional quantum tunneling through the multiverse using coordinary logic. Am I better than you? Well, technically yes. But for the past 48 years I've been employed by Sears collecting shopping carts from the parking lot. I can relate to you very much, my fellow working class citizens. Sears has been out of business for the last six years. Do you even understand the meta-quantum multi-everything theory of everythingness, the MQM-ETE? No. Then you are quite simply embarrassingly unqualified to engage me in conversation of any kind. So, uh, as it turned out, I ended up setting a record score on that test. And the Guinness Book was actually going to switch the world's highest IQ title to me, but then they dropped the highest IQ listing. IQ is not really a PC concept anymore, and I guess the Guinness Book fell victim to PC. An IQ as high as mine is very threatening to some people. Needless to say, I've made enemies in very high places, pushing certain agendas. Let's just say if I had not been cancelled, by now, we likely would have been doing this interview in a studio on the surface of Mars. My IQ would be somewhere between 190 and 210. 210 seems very, very, very high. It does seem that way, doesn't it? Albert Einstein was estimated at between 180 and 190. Charles Darwin is way down there in the toilet at 135. Through various top secret methods, Several government agencies collaborated with top academics to estimate my IQ, finding that it is somewhere within a realm of 1,984 and 2,045. I'll leave it at that. Over 2,000 seems very, very high. The truth is they're off by several orders of magnitude. But you're not ready for that conversation. At the age of six or seven months, I started pointing at objects and giving their correct names. A little red pair of shoes with, uh, with little brass buckles on them that I really loved. And I thought that buckle was a beautiful word, so I pointed to the buckle on one of these shoes and said, Buckle? My mother and father did not know each other. A sperm cell in my father's right testicle and the egg in my mother's left fallopian tube were able to psychosomatically communicate from across the tavern and convince them both to copulate at the perfect moment so that I could be conceived. At the age of uh, three or four, I started writing a book. I wrote my first doctoral thesis at the age of two. The world's top minds could not comprehend it. Their ineptitude infuriated me to the point of throwing my binky across the lecture hall. I found the whole experience of school to be highly annoying. I think I could have wrapped the whole thing up in a couple of years. 
Instead, they managed to keep me around for 12. <laughs> I spent most of the last two years sitting in the library. I just had had it. I told them I was tired of it and wasn't going to take it anymore, wasn't going to be showing up unless they made some special provision for me. And when I wasn't in the library, I wasn't there at all. In truth, I could have finished school on day one, but they kept me in high school for seven full years, purely out of spite and jealousy. I wasn't invited to my graduation. My head was too large to be fitted for a cap. My own personal opinion is, yes, head size does influence intelligence. Size does matter. It, it has to. Size does matter. I mean, if you take a very small creature with a very small head, you're never going to see a lot of intelligence out of it. Take a centipede. How smart are they? Not very smart. On the other hand, take a house cat. Well, that's somewhat smarter. Take a larger-headed creature, a monkey, even smarter than a house cat. Now take a really large-brained creature like a man. Smarter still. It seems that there is some kind of correlation going there. Even without an IQ test, the massive size of my brain is a clear indication that I am quite simply the smartest biological organism that has ever existed. Whales, dolphins, and elephants have brains that are significantly larger than human brains. Indeed, elephants are incredibly intelligent. They've been known to crush people who annoy them. Colleges and universities purport to be harnessing intelligence for the good of mankind. They're a breeding house for parrots. People are allowed to make little tentative moves forward, but they're not really allowed to do anything too radical. My roommates had become involved in some kind of riot or demonstration. Cars were turned over and burned. They were insisting that I should have been expelled despite the fact that I had nothing to do with this incident. I was in the library. And they never even called me. No one wanted to talk to me to ask whether I had been there. Maybe that's one of the reasons nobody came to me and said, hey, where's your parent's financial statement? This is an easy way to get rid of him. We just, you know, won't make any waves and hope that he doesn't get that statement in on time. Once I found this out, I simply left. I didn't take my finals or anything like that. Academia stinks, and it's not always the student's fault when something like that happens. Academia is a heartless, cold bureaucracy. Of course, corruption runs very deep in academia which is why they were very threatened by me and my theories. It is estimated that by now I would have won no less than 57 Nobel Prizes. But due to political bias, I was kicked out of community college long before I was able to attain my associates in automotive repair. I've been shot at on numerous occasions. I've seen a lot of guys stabbed with knives. I've seen people throw each other off 20 or 30 foot balconies. I've seen people stab each other with sticks. I once saw a man sharpen the edge of a coin by rubbing it on the sidewalk for two hours and 13 minutes. He then proceeded to use that coin to decapitate 15 people. I was the 16th person he tried to kill with that coin. I won't get into details due to political bias in the DOJ, but suffice it to say, the human race no longer needs to be concerned with his existence. One time I was thinking about artificial intelligence, then that evolved into a whole new way of looking at neural networks. Suddenly, this horrible fight erupted. I set the page down, and I mopped up the fight, and I came back over, and my piece of paper was gone. I tried and tried and tried to find that piece of paper. Nobody could tell me where it was, and I couldn't remember what the hell I'd written on it. One time, I wrote down the cure for cancer on a napkin. Immediately afterward, I had a bout of explosive diarrhea. Much to my dismay, we were out of toilet paper. Pretty sure you can guess what happened. Could I write it down on another napkin again? Sure. But who's to say that diarrhea won't happen again? Say you had the opportunity to run the world. 
how would you do it? Oh, well, one of the first things that I would do is I would institute something like the Manhattan Project for a safe, long-lasting means of birth control. Simply implant that in all children at age 10. That would solve our population problem right off the bat. It would also enable us to practice a benign form of eugenics, or I should probably say anti-dysgenics. Prevent undesirable genetic mutations in the human genome. People who wanted to have children would apply to make sure they had no diseases. Either we have to do it through genetic engineering, or we have to let only the fit breed. We like to think that it is our right to breed as incontinently as we want to, to have as many kids with whomever we want to. Future generations of mankind are being saddled with the results of what we do. Why do we continuously allow mediocre people to procreate when they could be procreating with me? If I were to run the world, the best breeding stock of human females, aka semen receptacles, would be comfortably accommodated in holding cells until I could find time to inseminate them. That would ensure that future generations would be the best and brightest to come. Because the best and brightest came first. Probably several times with each female. They've all been co-opted by the system. They have too much to lose by deviating from what is now a barren path. It's going to take somebody else, somebody coming in from outside, somebody uh, rising to the top from the bottom, shall we say. But could you provide such a framework? Yes, I could. I've already done so. Cognitive theoretic model of the universe, the CTMU. It shows that we're all a part of the same universal self. Theory of everything? <laughs> How so very quaint. Droll. Pedestrian. Everything is just the first layer of the multiverse. Talk to me when you have a theory that describes the interconnectedness of meta everything. And unlike certain self-proclaimed geniuses, I've actually done the math. So you can check it for yourself. Unfortunately, you won't understand it for at least another 1,000 years. Because I had to invent a higher order of mathematics just to explain the basics of my theory. I call it geniusology. Have you ever met someone smarter than yourself? It, as near as I can tell, no. Is he out there? I doubt it. Could be. I don't rule it out. I'm not in complete control of reality. Is there someone more intelligent than you? In this quadrant of the multiverse, no. Of course not. On a cosmic scale, God is, perhaps, more intelligent than I am. But the concentration of my intellect in a spatio-temporal locality is significantly greater than even God's intellect. Now I've known that since I was telepathic gametes comfortably housed in my parents' genitalia. The fact that I have not uttered it until this very moment quite literally makes me the most humble man who has ever existed.